Hey, good morning, Shakespeare. Don't run away, Shakespeare. Come back, come back. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Organic Dairyman, and today is Thursday, October 31st. And uh, happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> yep halloween um yeah so hope everybody's doing great today um, i'm doing pretty good um i'm just coming out here to the shed to do two things i need my sunglasses i think i forgot my sunglasses out here that sun is so bright i see where i put them or where'd they go or did i lose them oh no I thought I had my sunglasses out here. Hey, I hate that when you misplace stuff, don't you? I guess they're not out here. I thought they were out here. <clears throat> I guess not. So, anyway, um, we're just getting ready to milk the cows here. And, uh, um, I was going to plug plug the tank heater in on here but I don't know where the extension cord is where the extension cord go normally they're hanging there or there or one over there and they're all gone yeah jeepers where does everything go it's like it walks off on its own <laughs> I don't know where that extension cord went out oh I think I know where it's at now but uh, I know what it's being used for but I'll leave it there I'll have to come back out here with another cord. So, yeah. So, it's a nice sunny day out. So, today we're going to work it. I'm going to take that down today. And later on, after we get down chores, go get the combine. And, yeah. So, I'll get down with chores. And I got another thing I'm going to do here. I got to do before I get, or I go to get the combine. But I'll show you that here later. So, anyways. We're going to get down here with chores, and then uh, we get back with you guys later. Well, let's see if we get this thing started. It didn't start up last night. We had to jump it, so, but usually in the mornings, which is strange, I've been able to get it started. So, we'll see here if it gets started. Well, it didn't start. It just does like this. How it does i don't know i thought about there's a possibility unless there's something like draining the battery down you know sometimes the alternator can do that but so i think i'm gonna have to go start the loader tractor up and uh get the jumper cables and jump the thing again if i can hopefully get close enough maybe i can yeah maybe i'll just have to go get the battery charger but then i don't have an extension cord out here either I have to go get an extension cord. <sighs> oh well. I don't know what I'll do here. I'll get it figured out. Well. Got the 4020 running. And if you didn't notice, I found my sunglasses finally. So. Yep, I got them on. They were in the tractor. They were just camouflaged by some wires that were black in there and they blended right in. Good to go. That's running. Now I get on with the feeding. Hey, Daisy. How you doing, huh? How you doing, Daisy? How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You hungry, Daisy? Are you hungry? Yeah. Daisy's hungry. <laughs> okay I'm up on top of the bin here and just came up here to check to see how much um, how many beans how much beans we got in here and I don't know if we level it out let's say it's probably about two-thirds full pretty close for sure two-thirds full I don't know this last stuff was a little bit dirtier had more pods and I don't like that but it's all we could do and I, I couldn't get the sieves closed down 
tight as I wanted to because there was some trash in them. But anyways, that's what it uh, looks like in there. So uh, we're going to have to go in there and get that level out and get an estimate about approximately how many bushels because, you know, it's more or less when you, you're just measuring the bin, it's more or less a volume measurement than it is an actual you know it's it's an approximate estimate that you're going to get for bushels obviously the test weight is what you really go by in the end so um that's what we'll have to do but as long as we get approximate so we gotta let her we already talked to the broker the guy that's gonna um market our beans for us we talked to him this morning already and so he's gonna start looking around we gave him an estimate on how much we thought we had in there just an estimate but we got to get a more of an exact figure so we'll have to go in there and level it out but uh one thing that we do have going for us this year is the uh the moisture in the beans is a little higher it's like i think it's going to average around 11 and a half percent you know it could average 12 percent so whereas last year i think our average was maybe nine and a half percent for moisture so you know ideally you want your beans at 13 I don't know a bushel of, what is it a bushel of I don't even know what a bushel of beans is supposed to weigh but it's supposed to be 13 percent at a certain you know it weighs a certain amount you know at 13 percent so I don't know so we'll see what we, what our broker could find for us for a market for these beans and uh, we'll see we'll see what happens well panda pops what are you doing down here and snuggles what are you doing up on that tree did your mom move you down here again? Huh. I don't know. I think their mom moved them down here again. Not a very smart move. They need to stay down in the barn. Good grief. Okay, I am sitting in the TG210, and you might ask, why am I sitting in the TG210? Well, it is warm in here, and I could take a nap in here. <laughs> no, um, the reason why is yesterday my brother was coming back home with it and he noticed that the blinker wasn't working or the flashers didn't work so it probably means there is a fuse that could be burnt out or maybe the flasher is burnt out or maybe there's a relay switch so i got a quick look at that and then so I'll do that but anyways why i am working on this um my brother got some footage yesterday of out there disking and well and uh I'm just talking about some things too so anyways while i'm working on this i'm gonna let you watch him and then um i'll get back with you so i hope you enjoy um watching my brother and listen to what he has to say so um yeah so i'll get busy and see if i get this figured out hi everybody this is steven i'm organic dairyman's brother and Today I'm going to be taking over his channel, no just kidding, but he wanted me to get some footage of um, what I'm doing here today. So I'm down here right now on a piece of ground that we rent and I was going to give a little bit of history about this field down here. So anyways, um, you can see over here the side that's um, alfalfa. Um, that's about where the quarter line starts not quite but on uh, and then over here where the bean ground is that's like another quarter and anyways oh back about a hundred little over a hundred years ago the the land the bean ground here that was owned by um, our great great grandfather Charles J Fonder and then the ground over here where the alfalfa is on the right side um, that was owned by our other great great grandfather Arnold Jurgens and so anyways um, it was in 2015 the opportunity came up to start uh, renting this ground so anyways uh, it was kind of neat to see it come full circle here about a, a hundred years later that, that we were able to start uh, renting it. Um, even though it's a, it sits on two quarters of land, there's, uh, there's only about like 
96 acres I think it is that's actually tillable straight in front of me here is a old gravel pit um, some of the ground gets pretty sandy down there and so um, the previous owner his uh, father decided to start a gravel pit over there and uh, it's been abandoned now for about oh, 10 years I think and so now just this fall the current owner of the land he decided that he was going to fence it in and make a pasture out of it for a friend of his to put his cattle in the next year and then you can see like over here there's a, a great big slough and nobody's ever farmed that um, there was a story of my uncle Dennis was telling about back in 1976 it was a really dry year here and this slough dried out um, not enough that you could farm it but the reeds grew up and uh, he was able to go on there and um, bale up cut down the reeds and bale up the reeds for bedding for his um, cows for the winter time because it was so dry he didn't have enough straw for bedding and then uh, there's a couple other little fields, like one way over there on the other side of the trees, maybe you can't see it, and there's a cornfield. That's about like 11 acres. And then off to my left, you can't even see it, up over that hill over there, there's another little field that's about like 15 acres. And um, when the opportunity did come up to rent this, uh, we decided to take this bigger field down here, which is like around 66 acres all together between the alfalfa and the bean ground. And uh, the other two fields are cousin Matt. He was looking for some extra land to farm. So uh, we suggested to the landowner that he was wanting to rent some. So they were fine with the fact that he wanted to rent it and they were willing to split it up like, like that. So that's kind of the story behind this field down here. So anyways, uh, as long as I'm on camera here today, I wanted to give a big shout out to uh, another channel that I really enjoy watching. Um, it's Chris Luzzi. He's uh, in Michigan and he farms with Oliver and White Tractors. And I really enjoy watching his channel. If you uh, enjoy classic tractors, um, his channel is a great channel to watch. Um, I always enjoy seeing his Olivers and Whites out in the field doing stuff. So uh, give it a check out and see what you think of it. So I'm going to get some footage here of uh, I'm going to be doing some chisel plowing. So thanks for watching. Okay, everybody, this is Steven again. Um, Doing some chisel plowing here now, so um, get some footage for everybody to see.
more just to be able to get the stocks to go through the, or old to the plow. And I thought, you know, man, we better just try to get something, a disc chisel, so that we could uh, not have to disc it so many times because they were selling some fuel. And with the extra land, we'd never get all the work done if we had to work it that, that many times. So um, I did a little shopping around on the internet just to see, you know, what was out there and stuff. And, Anyways, just for the, the heck of it, I thought, well, I'll call our new Holland dealership and just, he's a Krauss dealer, and so I thought, well, maybe he'd have something in the you know, Krauss line, but anyways, I told him what I was looking for, and he said, well, he didn't have a Krauss, but he had this John Deere chisel plow uh, for sale. I could come down and, and get it and try it out. So, boy, it didn't take very long using it to figure out that this was a pretty good deal. And so we ended up buying it. And it's been a pretty good decision. It, it saves us a heck of a lot of fuel because we don't have to go discing first in, in certain uh, things of what we're doing. Corn stocks, you always got to disc it at least once. But at least it saves us from just here, you know, twice, twice. but uh, I really like it. It's, it's been a pretty good chisel plow. I think you can, you can see for yourself, it looks like it's doing pretty good. So, anyways, that's what I'm up to today. I didn't get the flashers working, but I did find out that I think the flasher unit is, is shot. The fuse for the flashers was burnt out, but something in the flasher unit must have went bad. But at least the, um, the the beacon light works, so you got something, but you don't have turn signals. And so we'll have to get a new flasher thing for it. So, but that's what it was, the flasher. So. But anyways, did you guys enjoy or like my brother? If you liked, um, <laughs> if you guys liked that, um, you want me to get more clips or give the camera, other camera to my brother to have him record things, just, you know, if you like it, let me know down in the comment section. So that way, you know, you kind of see, see a little, a few things from his perspective too. So if you guys like that, like I say, just let me know down in the comment section and, uh, but uh, I gotta go grab something out in the other shed and then I'm gonna grab a quick bite to eat and then I'm gonna head head over and get the combine and bring that bring that thing home. Okay everybody. Um, I'm just heading over to the field right now and I'm trying to hurry up before it gets dark so at least I get the head off on the combine before it gets dark but I do I did bring my uh, I brought I got it in my pocket here brought my little headlamp along so I don't need to add a little extra light I got so but I mean it's not like it's bad bad in the dark but it's like to have everything done before it gets dark so anyways um, yep I'm gonna be over there in a little bit and uh, get the head off and um, yeah get the combine home well, apparently there was a little bit of something I missed out here the other night. So I'm going to quick combine this, I guess. I didn't realize that I missed this in the dark. Funny what you can't always see. In the dark. I don't know how I could have missed this, but I guess I did. So, I really wasn't done combining last night. <laughs> I thought I was, but I wasn't. Oh, good golly. How could I have missed this? How could I have? Now it looks like I'm gonna have to make one more pass. I can't quite get it now. Wider than 25 feet. 
coming in here. There you go. A little bit of something there. <laughs> I'll get it. Gotta make one more little pass and we'll be done. done I just strapped the head down and everything so it's on the trailer good and firm and we're not gonna take it home tonight uh, I was taking home in the daylight but that way it's ready to go we just gotta hook on to it and pull it home so we'll probably do that tomorrow get bring the trailer home and brother he's still out there working so uh, I'm gonna <clears throat> just uh, gonna make the slow drive home with the combine so um I'll see you guys in about an hour. Well, an hour my time, but for you guys, it'll be pretty much, you know, instantaneous. <laughs> yep, that's the magic of YouTube. Okay, there. It was an hour long drive, a boring long hour drive, just to go 12 miles. Whew, yeah. But at least combine's home, and um, now I get it switched over to corn for so it's ready for corn. When the corn's ready to go, I don't know. We're kind of thinking about what we're gonna do for corn. Um, is since it depends on how wet the corn is, we're gonna watch the weather. You know, if the weather stays good, we're just gonna leave the corn out in the field. But if the weather starts looking kind of iffy, what we're thinking what we're gonna do is just take and, and maybe um, put a thousand or thousand, 1,500 bushels, maybe 2,000 in the one bin and just dry down, you know, that much at a time rather than just dry, fill the bin up full and then try to dry it down. And then we'll take some of that corn and we'll put it in the hopper bottom bin. I know it's gonna be a, a hassle, but you can actually dry the corn down faster in smaller batches. So if you if you only have if the corn is only like you know four feet deep in the bin versus you know fifteen or twenty feet deep, it's gonna dry down a lot faster. So maybe if we could get the corn dried down in like four days, we could dry like fifteen hundred bushels down in four days or something, two thousand. Then we'll move it over to the other bin and then do it that way. That's what we might do if, well, we'll see what happens here, but we're just gonna let the corn dry down out in the field a little bit more. If it looks like there's gonna be, cause sometimes we could get a mid November blizzard. So we're just gonna watch the weather closely and just see what happens. But anyways, in the meantime, we gotta make sure we get the combine ready to go. So when we're ready to go for corn, we're ready to go, so. Anyways, tomorrow is Friday, November 1st, so I don't know what we're going to do well, tomorrow. Well, you guys will see. I ain't going to spoil it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. You'll just have to wait and see. 
So anyways, I gotta go. Um, my cousin, he's coming over here. He wants me to check some of his corn with uh, our moisture tester. Apparently, I don't know, moisture testers are too expensive or something. I don't know. We somehow afforded one, I don't know how, but he wants to come over and check it with ours. So it's just fast and easy to do it with ours. So I guess, so he wants, we're gonna, I guess he's bringing the corn over here, so I don't have to run over there with it. So he's just gonna bring it over here and quick check it. And he just wants to know what his corn is running at. So I know last week they came over and checked it and it was like 24.8 or something. So I don't know how much it's dried down in a week. We'll, we'll find out. I'm kind of curious myself, but but anyway, I gotta go. So um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Organic Dairyman. And uh, <sighs> thanks guys for everything. I really appreciate your subscriptions and your views and your comments. And um, have a good night. Take care, and I'll catch you later.